Hello everyone, this is Neo Pano. I'm here with a Metal Gear Solid 5 infiltration guide. Um, essentially, the purpose of this guide is to show you how to move around enemies with confidence and not worried about if you're going to get caught or heard or detected in any way. Um, before I get into the main part of my guide, I just want to talk about something real quick. It's called the response system. Um, it's new to the Metal Gear Solid you know, games. And basically what it does is it's a system that doesn't allow you to exploit certain aspects of the game repeatedly. Um, so for example, if you are a player that likes to just head sh shoot guys in the head and uh, get through them instead of sneaking around, the game will actually, after a while, counter uh, that type of strategy by having enemies wear helmets and then depending on how, how high the level of response is more enemies will wear helmets um, uh, another example if you like taking enemies out from far away whether with sniper rifles or not um, you'll find you're up against a lot more snipers being deployed in the field um, the low level response is bolt action and then the higher level response is multiple snipers with semi-automatic rifles which can make things really crazy um, so basically you want to keep the response system in mind. Um, if you start having trouble with it, try completing missions completely stealthy, or you can go to combat deployment here, and at the bottom of the list, you'll find a bunch of, uh, different supplies and things like that you can take out. Um, it doesn't work permanently, but it will give you a three to five mission window to complete um, you know said mission without having to worry about um, helmets or snipers or any, you know whatever mission you end up doing just keep in mind these missions no matter what like so they'll only the highest success will always be 95% and you'll always have a 10% predicted loss so generally when you do these missions you're gonna lose one person so you want to make sure you do it with the lowest uh, tier team possible that it can be completed with so you only so you know I'll only lose one a plus guy for this mission I don't want to lose an a plus plus I don't want to lose an s rank so I'll do the lowest tier that gives me that 95% success probability okay so now that I've touched on that I'll get into the bulk of the guide which is infiltration um, of course most missions once you pick them you'll have a Set of landing zones. You low, generally, you want to go with the low danger zone. Um, some missions like C2, C2W you can complete with high danger zones, and you can find guides for that other places. Just ask me and I'll tell you how easy. Um, we're going to go with a. Yeah, we'll go with this mission. So we just got to um, rescue two people. You can see the game clock in the bottom right, it says time, GMP heroism. Uh, the time is now uh, 20, 100, 20 hundred hours, eight o'clock. Um, and I'll show you how that's, uh, how that works into this next thing I'm gonna do. But just keep in mind the time's around 20 hundred hours, eight o'clock. Okay, so once you pick your mission and select your deployment, where you're gonna deploy, um, you go into your loadout screen and you'll pick the equipment that you want to bring with you on the mission. Um, if you're trying to save up GMP for equipment and stuff like that, um, it's a good idea at the loadout screen to go with the bare minimum you need to save as much GMP as possible. So for example, if I was trying to save some GMP, I would go to a level 2 of the rifle. Um, you can see it saves you about 3,400 GMP by going from this rank 5 down to this rank 2. So, um, so things like that, lowering the tier of a weapon, um, just removing a thing in general can lower it a lot. Um, I don't care at this point, I've completed the game and all that, so it's not a problem for me, but you know, if you're in that predicament, keep in mind you know, reducing your loadout 
to a bare minimum, and then completing multiple missions can really save you a lot of GMP. As long as, you know, just make sure you can still complete the mission without too much difficulty. Okay, so once you have all your equipment and your buddy and vehicle set up, you go to commence mission, and then you're given three choices in most missions. ASAP, 0600, or 1800. So for ASAP, that alludes to the 20 hundred hours, eight o'clock thing I'm, I was talking about. If I want ASAP, that's the time I would deploy immediately. Um, but for these other times, 0600, that's sunrise, daybreak. So as soon as the sun comes up, you would be deployed. So that would mean from generally, unless you took a really long time to complete the mission, you would be doing the mission during the day. 1800, that's um, sunset or nightfall. So for 1800 hours, you'd more than likely be doing most of the mission at night unless you take a really long time. Um, in general, the difference, um, light makes it easier to identify um, both targets and landmarks. Um, at the same time, it allows enemies to see and track you easier. Darkness, of course, is more of a natural camouflage for you and your enemies. But at night, enemies are generally not as alert, and a lot of times you'll catch enemies sleeping as long as you haven't raised any type of suspicion or alert. Um, for this, I'm going to go with the daytime, just so it's a little bit more visually um, more palpable, easier to see. Just you know, So if I'm talking about something, you can see what I'm talking about, things like that. Um, but once you get a hang of the game, you should... And, understand where enemies are deployed and things like that you're gonna want to go with a nighttime infiltration just because it's gonna make it that much more easier for you um, so, but I will go with the daytime for this one um, keep in mind if you played earlier Metal Gear Solid games you probably remember the visual cone um, used to represent the enemy's field of vision that is still at, at its essence, what Metal Gear is about, it's just you don't, you know, you don't see that enemy's cone like you would in Metal Gear Solid 1 on the Soliton radar. It's not marked in that nice blue uh, thing for you. You kind of have to uh, logistically, on your own, understand this enemy is this far away, so, you know, I can run it. I can run from this distance, I can crawl from this distance, I can crouch walk from this distance without being detected. Um, it's really on you to determine the enemy's visual and audio ranges. But with that said, I do have some, uh, some numbers here I will read off to you. The hearing ranges are going to be a lot more accurate than the visual ranges. Just because with the visual ranges you can wear um, camouflage, you know, you can do a lot of different things visually to make yourself so you're not seen as um, as easily or as fast as you would um, be careful down there, boss. see this character with the gold I'm wearing he's gonna be generally he's gonna be detected a lot faster than someone wearing a sneaking suit or um, uh, you know if I'm if I'm at the airport and I'm wearing like a splitter uniform or I'm, I'm in this setting wearing uh, you know, uh, the forest camouflage So I really don't even know what I'm doing right now, of course. <laughs> I gotta figure that out. Okay, so I gotta extract some people. I don't think there's a time thing on this mission. But generally, when you're going for an S rank, you wanna complete the mission as fast as possible, with no alerts, and without killing anyone. Um, it's not like past Metal Gear games, though, where if you kill someone, there's no chance to S rank the mission or something like that. Um, it just makes it a little bit harder. Also, 100% um, accuracy or just not using a weapon at all can uh, give you huge bonuses to your uh, score. But basically, to S rank a mission in this game, you need over 130,000 points. Um, so, figuring you know how to do that is sometimes the hardest part. And I've actually won wrong way. So I'm not really starting off this mission that good. <laughs> Hope I can make up for it though. Okay, so now while I'm running, I'm going to go over the hearing ranges. 
this is what enemies can hear and at what um, distance in meters they can hear that. Hear that. So at 160 meters, enemies can hear gunshots um, without silencers and explosions. At 60 meters, enemies can hear barking of D-Dog and uh, Fulton extraction with the balloon. Um, it's 45 meters, I believe, for the wormhole extraction. Could be, and that might be a give or take. I'm really not 100% on that one. Um, at 30 meters, D-Horse galloping, or Big Boss's sprint. This is Big Boss's sprint. So at 30 meters, that can be heard. And at 15 meters, a magazine toss or a decoy hitting something like a ground or a wall can be heard. At 9 meters, big boss running, this is running, can be heard. And at 4.5 meters, crouch walking like I am now can be heard. However, if you crouch walk slowly, you cannot be heard at all. And if you crawl, you cannot be heard at all. And I am really not doing good right now. Okay, so now for your visual ranges. And remember, like I was saying, um, the enemy sees in, a, sees in a cone similar to uh, past Metal Gear games. It's just you can't make out the cone. Like, you know, there's no visual representation in the game. You have to kind of figure it out in your own mind logistically. So at 70 meters or more, the enemy can't see you. Um, you can run right past an enemy if he's 70 meters or more away, and you don't have to worry about being seen. But if you're 70 meters, like, uh, 70 meters dead ahead of a guy, then they can see you. Uh, you'll see a white line come up to indicate that they have noticed you. You won't be, you, it won't automatically set off an alarm, but the enemy can see you and they will come to check it out. Um, at 45 meters or 40 meters at night, crawling can be detected or seen. So they, another, like I said, a white line will come up and the enemy will come to investigate if they see you uh, crawling, you know, 45 meters in the day, 40 meters at night. At 20 meters in the day or 15 meters at night, um, enemy reacts to crawling stance. So even if you're crawling, the enemy is going to be able to see you. Uh, 20, 20 meters in the day, 15 meters at night. Now at 10 meters or less, it's an instant detection. So let me here. Let me try to set this off on a guy. He should. Okay. So see how he saw me within 20 like that. And you were, I kind of had to wait till he was straight on with me for him to detect me. So just, that's what I'm talking about. Um, just no, understanding how that enemy's code works with this. Okay, but now you can see I've gotten behind cover we're all set. But if I would have let him come within 10 meters of me, it would have been an instant detection. So no matter what stance I'm in, crawling, crouch walking, running, if I'm within 10 meters, they see me. Or 10 see me. And it will set off an alert or reflex mode depending on how you have it set up. So as you can see, all these guys, I'm crouch walking, all these guys can see me. care about right now is saving the uh, prisoner. I know there's two of them right now. Extract a remaining target. Oh, 
He's coming too. Roger that. I've pretty much gone over all the. Actually, I have them. Okay, there's something else I want to go over. Incapacitation time. So I'm gonna go from shortest to the longest. In that situation. Great work. Now exfiltrate. Oh. Give me a second. Oh, yeah, let that guy get up. Okay, so from shortest, shortest to longest. The shortest incapacitation is that basic throw you just saw. That will knock an enemy out for the least amount of time. A little bit longer than that is the CQC throw headfirst into a wall. In this case, we'll make it a tree. But basically, you want to make sure you're by where you want to throw them. Bam. Hit them into it. That'll knock them out a little bit longer than just a basic uh, CQC. All right, the next longest is one everyone knows. The tranquilizer headshot. And get a All right, but anyways, if I hit him with a tranquilizer round. Like that. That is a little bit longer than a CQC throw head first into a wall. After the tranquilizer round. The next longest incapacitation time is a choke. You can do the choke standing or crouching. Crouching will give you reduced visibility. Once you start to see what it looks like, he pulls his arm up and you'll pass out just like that. That's the second to longest uh, incapacitation time. For the longest incapacitation time, it's a five hit CQC combo. So. Set it up, I'm just gonna do this. And a good trick with this CQC combo, to know that you uh, have done it right, so you just tap the button, keep tapping it. That last hit, you saw the helmet fly off. That's how you know you did the five hit CQC attack. Just like that. Now that five hit CQC, that is the longest incapacitation time. But we gotta also keep in mind is that you have to stand and you have to move quite a bit to uh, pull that off. So there's a very big uh, risk that you'll be detected by enemies while doing that. So just keep that in mind. It is the longest time, but it does have this. Conversely, it's very easily detectable if enemies are around. Okay, so with that, that's pretty much the bulk of the. That's pretty much it for my guide here. Um, if you have any more questions about anything I've talked about or want more in-depth information or maybe even just want to S-rank of a certain mission, see how I do it, uh, feel free to hit me up, ask, comment, critique. Uh, it's all good with me. Um, that said, I hope this guide helped you um, and I hope it helps your gaming experience. Take care, guys. Peace.